Hello, everyone, and welcome back to this week's episode of my Best Vintage Life podcast. My name is Bridget Morawski, and I'm joined with my co-host, Art Bazarkanian. Hey, guys. And together, we are two of three parts of Baz Brothers Unlimited, a vintage wholesaler based in Fresno and Los Angeles, California. Right now, we are recording from my kitchen. It is Labor Day here in the United States, a national holiday, and we are using our new clip-on lav mics that I bought using the money from our patron support. So thank you if you're a paying patron. It's thank nice you. to have some equipment upgrades. So now we can record at my house a little bit easier. We can record on the road. We can record working in the warehouse. Uh, be totally transparent. I have mine clipped onto my t-shirt and my bra. Art has his clipped onto a water bottle. Just wasn't picking up his voice. Is that chin? Jaw. Your jaw. Mm. My mandible. Your mandible. Our normal opening deets. As always, I prefer to do business over email. So please send your questions our way. Admin at mybestvintagelifepodcast.com. Admin at mybestvintagelifepodcast.com. That's order questions, wholesale questions. Always check out our wholesale FAQs on the website first, though, please. And uh, looking forward to hearing from you. We are on social media. We are on TikTok and Instagram, and that is My Best Vintage Life Podcast. Our website is mybestvintagelifepodcast.com. You can sign up for our newsletter there for vintage resellers, and you can do some shopping. You can purchase our wholesale lots there. Our fall ones went live two weeks ago, and uh, once again, the wholesale FAQs. And if you have a chance to rate or review the podcast on Apple Podcasts or Podchaser, that is much appreciated. A rating is giving stars. A review is just a few kind words. Reviews count toward the algorithm more. So if you have a chance to write us a review, we haven't gotten one in ages, it would be much appreciated. Right, Art? Yes. (sighs) Obsession at the moment. Trying to stay cool. Yeah. This morning was brutal. Yeah, I took the day off. I was proud of myself. I took four-day weekends every summer holiday here in the United States. I think it's the first time I've done that since I moved here. And, uh, you know, typically for most people in the United States, this signals the end of summer, but we're about to have the hottest weather we've had all summer. Tomorrow is going to be 115 degrees Fahrenheit. And it doesn't look like it's cooling down until the weekend when we get some, well, it was a little cloudy today, but some extra clouds. And then next week it's going down to like 90. I know, that doesn't even seem like just in time for yeah. me to head out of town. <laughs> yeah, lucky you. It always works out that way. Do you have an obsession? Um, the cupcake I just ate. Art didn't want it. I was hoping he'd say no. Um, That's the energy I was getting. Like, yeah. Well, I got. I had gotten them. I had some people at my cabin over the weekend, and um, we didn't get to cupcakes. So I've been binge eating them. Rubicon Bakery, you can get them at Whole Foods. The birthday cake ones, they're filled in the center with the same frosting and the sprinkles. Your eyes are sparkling talking about cupcakes. So it was so good. Yeah. They're so, so good. So that's my obsession. Special special relationship more than an obsession. (laughs) What about you? What's your obsession? Trying to stay cool. Oh, that's right. You said that. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) See, you weren't even listening. That's pretty much what happens at work. I talk, talk, talk. And in one ear, out the other. She's just waiting to talk. Oh, see, it's so nice not having to hold my phone and record. I feel like I'm talking to my boob. It's a little awkward. Hello, boob. Hi, boob. Hello, breast. (laughs) Breast friends. All right. So I'm... I had an idea about what I wanted to talk about today, but I kind of got a little uh, curveball, a little sideline. So last week, Art had, um, honestly, I just haven't been feeling TikTok the last few months, really. Just haven't been into it. And he will say, he'll text me if we're in different parts of the warehouse. He'll say, hey, I have a great idea for TikTok. So we did one. And I had a feeling we were going to get some negative responses, but wowzer. I've deleted all of them at this point in time and blocked a bunch of people, so you won't be She'll able to see She'll never show anything. me because she'll know I'll find these people and crack them in the head. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I posted it last week, and the first few comments were so negative. I, I got off social media this weekend uh, for the holiday, and that was really nice. So this morning I was like, oh, let's see what people said. 
And then I thought, you know what? I'm going to share this as a reel on Instagram. But then I added my two cents to the beginning and the end of it. Uh, so if you want to watch that, it's our most recent reel. So I, you'll see our... Oh, no, there goes a fire plane. Fuck, you see him? Yes. Ugh. Anyway, so what this was was... I had just gotten some really, really good bales of Made in the USA 501s, and that's all there were in there, was Made in the USA 501s. And it's pretty exciting because, you know, realistically, we go through so many thousands and thousands of pairs of denim every month that probably maybe 10% is Made in the USA, but to actually get bales that were, you know, pre-sorted and old, and everything was made in USA was amazing and fun and the quality was great and the sizing was impeccable you know lots of small sizes and so I was trying to and then Bridget asked me a simple question like what can you wholesale well these the for? reason I asked that is because I get so many inquiries from people and I hate to say and that's it, why there's a range but there are people who are like I just started selling denim I want to buy from you and I know because I was in that position at one point in time I'm like this person's not gonna be for these they have no idea what they cost and i hate to be like that but it's realistic it's realistic it really is people yeah, but it's also the part that pisses me off to no end is there's nothing absolute out there there is absolutely nothing absolute and that's the that's the only thing that's consistent about denim vintage and even a pizza one pizza parlor sells a the same pepperoni yeah. pizza for a different price than someone some, else. Some places. Right? Some places sell it for 24 bucks. Some places do 12 dollars 17 And there's something in between. And realistic, what is it? Dough, cheese, cheese. sauce, Very basic and ingredients. possibly some pepperoni. And that's it. So what I was saying is, okay, wholesale-wise, this is what I, I'm selling these for. Those weren't pulled out of my ass. Those are actually my wholesale prices that I have clients for. I have a $60 client. I have a $75 client. I have a $100 client. Yeah. And I even have a $125 and I even, wholesale I even said, client. I said to someone, we're not charging everyone $125. For the but, most part, it's toward the lower end of the bell curve. Even then, it's none of the damn business. What it is is well, you get the price that you want based on what market you have. Well, like I, in Fresno. Oh. If you had a retail store in Fresno, the most you're going to sell realistically a main usa pair of jeans for is 75 dollars, maybe 50 dollars. Yeah. i know someone who sells them for 30 40 and i buy it from them okay <clears throat> my skill as a businessman is having an outlet that i can sell things at higher prices than someone else and that's what that's called development of your business and then there's others who whine and complain oh i can only get 40 dollars. okay then don't pay sixty dollars. Obviously, then you need to find something else to sell, and that's fine. If that's if you're getting them for ten well, bucks, you're kind of you're bulldozing through a bunch of like slow points. That's who I am. I wanted to hit. Okay, go ahead then. We'll just just take a breath. No. I mentioned to someone Instagram. We had a much more positive response to the video, but Instagram is a much more familial feel. We have a lot of longtime listeners. It, it's more of a group you know versus the community that you've curated yes tiktok tiktok is a great place to gain new people but it's very much like a um it's a kindling and it's not like a full-blown fire you know you can warm people up there and you'll have a lot of people come over to instagram from tiktok it happens to me all the time but you're not going to get everyone you're not going to get people well, that's not the goal ever yeah and well so Here's one of the things I said to somebody on Instagram. I said, you know, Art technically has no obligation to tell people what he charges for anything. But you go above and beyond, and, and me too sometimes, with our time and our energy to provide people with educational content. Yeah, what well, would take and me because, 25 years to learn. They right. want to know in and 30 I, fucking and, seconds. And that's another thing I said. I would have lost my mind... If had over 10 years ago when I started selling vintage, I had an account like ours or some of the other educational ones out there to learn from. There was nothing. Instagram was where you posted pictures of like your margarita or your dog. It wasn't a place to make money. You know, there there weren't social media channels to really learn from. I mean, there was YouTube, but it was it was where you went to watch like, I don't know, a fucking cat do something funny. It was just... 
it was very lighthearted. So um, I feel bad for these people. And what I said in my video is it's their loss because when I block them, unless they make another account or they go on a friend's account or a significant other's account, whatever, they lose access to our content. And if they come back on another account and they do it again, I'll keep fucking doing it because I don't have the patience for it. And I, it just, it's really, it's, it's sad to me how three or five seconds of arrogance people are willing to give up an educational experience. And lose money. Yeah. I know, I know. Educate, how do you educate yourself in pretty much you know, anything? Business? And I, you I, lose money. I think the thing that irritated me about a lot of these people and their comments is it's like, okay... You're a vintage reseller. It's a very lucrative business. If you don't want to make money, then get the fuck out of the business. I don't know about you, but I have bills to pay. If these people had to pay my bills, they'd shit their pants. If they had to pay Art's bills, their head would fucking explode. We have to make money. He supports his family. I support myself. You know, don't you want to support yourself? Don't you want to support your family or your significant other or your kids or your pets even or whatever your habit may be? I mean... I, I think I, most I, people do, but the problem is pure laziness. It comes down to laziness and lack of... Well, I think it's also jealousy too. Oh, well, well, that's a given. That's why you always see me. I've never given a shit because I had it rough growing up. I had relatives that were jealous of my success. Oh, so well, yeah, that I makes know. it easy if your own relatives could turn on you then you know pretty much the whole world is so i've always blocked out people and i just do my thing and eat yeah steak i mean yeah. i don't i don't need people to make me feel good or bad about the amount of money i make or how i can support myself or the things i can buy or the way i can live i know at my at, like at the heart of it i'm a good person if i see someone struggling or there's a gofundme i'm like oh I'll give them money, sure. Got or do. people reach out, hey, this person, you know, last month, a friend of a friend, his house burned down in a wildfire. I sent him $100. Like, I I do those things. I wish I could give more of my time voluntarily to, to causes, but I do what I can philanthropically. And I, I work hard so that I can be more philanthropic in the future. One day, I don't want to have to work. I want to be able just to help specifically animals. That's my thing. You know, it's just like, it's crazy to me how these, how just in like one second, two, three, four, five seconds, people just That's dissect you. They dissect you like a frog, you know? And it's no, like, no, no. you no, they, know they, nothing you, you about are, me. Let the, that's their shallowness and their stupidity. It's, but it's so it. sad. It's oh, so it's sad that it's that pitiful. arrogance and that rudeness causes them to just miss out. Miss out. If, if any of the people listening to this that have been listening for a long time, you wouldn't still be listening if you thought Art or myself were a piece of shit or, or bad people, right? You know, and then, then like... See, I think you're taking it as a judgment, but the, look oh, at this. Well, I look, when you told me those people's comments... <laughs> you think people aren't judgmental these days? But the thing is, people you, have you lost care their about minds. their judgment. I uh, no, I don't. Shit. No, I don't. No, when you started telling me about it, I'm just like, oh, man, a group of idiots... That's all that should come from it. Those people are idiots. Because to me, it's like, they don't know shit. You know? They don't know what some things are worth. They don't know. You know, we have customers who sell just a regular pair of made in, Le made in USA Levi's. They wash it. And they get about three ninety five in their store right. retail. And that's, 300... not, that's not, has nothing to do with me. I don't nope. care what people sell it for. More power no. to them. But they, people think, oh my God, they're selling it for that much. But, right. Okay. What's their marketing like? What's their overhead like? How much are they paying to be there? And yeah. who are their clients? Well, let's see. People business? are just so exactly. fast to judge That's and the to laziness. attack. They don't even think about those things. Yes. Yeah. They, they don't think about the rent. No, you know why? Because these are the payroll. These are tools that just so only sell. <laughs> I used on I used a good word today. I said adult. Adults? That's adults. like a douche and like a tool. A, no, like a dummy, like adult. Oh, adult. I yeah. like it. It's like very like neutral. Not super offensive. You're adult. You're a dumb, dumb dolt. How funny those that, those were that seventies and eighties brand. I know. Dolts. Yeah. I have. Maybe that's why. <laughs> dolt backpack maker. The fanny pack. The fanny pack. Um, I'm gonna do an ad read really quick. Start collecting more thoughts, please. Okay. <laughs> Oak City Vintage is a community curated vintage shop in Oklahoma City, showcasing the best local vintage sellers and makers in apparel, accessories, and home decor. 
Our goal is to create a joyful and easy shopping experience for our customers. We carry a variety of styles from dresses to blouses to tees and denim, all ranging from the 40s through the 90s. The shop strives to bring one-of-a-kind shopping experience so you can feel good and look good while supporting local businesses and keeping beautiful goods out of the landfill. New arrivals are added to the floor and website weekly, so there's always a chance to find your next treasure. That's oakcityvintageokc.com if you're not in Oklahoma, and obviously you can visit Oak City Vintage in Oklahoma City if you are. That's oakcityvintageokc.com. Thank you for your patronage. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> um, and I'd like some of the other points people had. I'm talking, I want to talk about the positive points more, but somebody said, you know, people don't even like blink an eye to spend uh, two to three hundred dollars on a pair of shit denim. I mean, I've, I've felt pairs of jeans. I won't say the companies, but some of like the it girl denim companies, they're awful, awful. They're expensive. I've, I mean, I just, I have a pair of shoes I probably paid, I don't know on sale I probably got them for like 200 bucks I wore them recently and the whole like part of the sole is just coming off like my feet weren't even that sweaty but you know it's hot here yeah. my feet were stuck a little bit I literally took my <laughs> foot out and like chunks of the sole not the sole fuck the, the footbed were coming off yeah that's disappointing they're patent leather like a chunky strappy heel yeah it's just like i would much rather put my money and invest my money into vintage than shit like that you know i mean i'm trying to think of the last time i bought a pair of modern denim i couldn't even tell you it was when i was really really tiny it wasn't here no free people probably when i had my employee discount for urban and i with my employee discount i was probably paying like 60 70 dollars you know, during employee appreciation where we got a little extra, a little extra carrot, but, um, it was awful. Yeah. <laughs> totally stretch and, and bad. Um, yeah, there's a reason why people like main USA denim. It lasts forever. I mean, if they're, most of it is and, 40 to 30 uh, years old and, and it's still uh, yeah. wear as well. Oh, that was another issue people were having with the eras. They're saying what era the denim we didn't even show them the denim. It was focused on you. They were actually saying, you don't have any this era in there. You, I'm like, wow, could I maybe borrow that crystal fucking ball you have to like come up with these these notions and be right? Like, <laughs> I was blown away. Yeah, most people. You are... didn't hold up a pair of jeans and say, this is the 1980s. You literally just like showed them the bail. Crazy, crazy. It's not surprising. I know you're very surprised. I've dealt with idiots for a long time. Can't fix stupid. You can't fix stupid. Um, and then another, what was one of the other positive points somebody had? Oh, shit. No, I don't know if I can... You were gonna... You had another point you wanted to talk about. Did I? <laughs> Did you? <laughs> about what? <laughs> Just about the denim. Okay, well, let's take a breather. Take a breather. And talk about, let's just say, let's use when I started working with you as a starting point, okay? Okay. So we have 2016. Let's talk about in the time from 2016 until 2022, yeah. September 2022, how have the prices of Made in the USA Levi's changed? They've gone up just for the fact that it's they're harder to get and there's less of them now because of just wear and tear that's another six years and they're more desired by, by a lot more companies mm -hmm. who are doing remake with them so now you have added pressure because you have big companies competing for middle-sized companies then you have resellers competing for it right so you know supply and demand yeah price has gone up uh, when you first started, we were selling at our warehouse, Main USA, for 35 to 40 45 I was going to say, it was probably around 40 Yeah. It was 35 and it was based on sizes. And, I mean, to think it's only, realistic, it's only doubled and tripled isn't that bad considering what inflation has done in that time. Yeah. What the cost of goods, transportation, and everything else. So, we've kept it relatively fair. 
Um, and the fact that we've come up with so many in that time is also like that was the, that's the challenge well and i did you know, i mentioned that in a comment i said these people have no idea how hard and how stressful it is for both you and your brother to source every month yeah I mean, it's a real, large amount of pressure have, it is because we have to come up with i mean not just because a lot of people assume that oh you buy 200 and you sell 200 well no you don't it's never that clean and simple it's in order to get 200 pieces that work for a certain order, you're probably looking at anywhere, if you're super lucky, 300 pieces. Average is 50% yield. And then whatever you don't use for that, you end up using for something else, whether it's rework projects, shorts, skirts, whatever. But in order to fulfill our, every month we have to come up with about 5,000 good pieces. So we're buying about 10 to, 20, 10 to 15, some months 20, like this month that just came in was close to 17,000 pieces, you know? And you gotta process it, get it ready, separate it, color, so just, there's a lot that goes into it, but yeah. yeah. And then finding sources that are honest and sell you what they say. You've seen the crap that I lose my mind over. Oh, I'm, I know, I'm somebody, never... well, somebody commented today and said, are you buying bales? I broker for a rag house. They said, after the last few we've gotten, I'm not really interested in trying a new source, but you can email me. <laughs> yeah, I'll always try something right. one time, but not a big purchase and not like, oh, here's 20 grand, uh, send me stuff. It's like, no, I'll give me, you know, a couple hundred bales or a couple hundred pounds and I'll see what it is and we'll go from there. But there's just not that many reliable sources anymore yeah you know that's why our sources we've had such long-term relationships with what killed me on this video and it happened on one other one too people people have started doing like transactions like in my comments <laughs> selling to each other yeah oh that's cool no i mean they're annoying people it doesn't matter it's funny. This one lady, I blocked her. I'm like, I can't handle her. Like her her profile picture would just it just like I can't handle her face. Like, <laughs> <laughs> who, who are you? Are you me now? Christ! I just can't look at her fucking face anymore. It's like she t it's a picture of her and her boyfriend, and she took it like from up here, and all you see are like her fucking big saggy titties, and I'm just like, I can't take your picture anymore. Oh my god! Yeah. So, and she's been trying to sell people denim and buy denim, and I'm just like, oh fuck these people! I'm like, this is so oh, it's not. It wasn't a one time thing. She's like, no, she's done it multiple times, like oh. trying to like get business off my feed. I'm like, I'm here, well, I'm like, you, know, you maybe need a bra. Percent. No, percent. yeah, why don't you buy? You are too much. No, I just I like when people if you're have a nice picture and no, not their I mean, boobs. No, no, no. I don't care about big boobs. I have big boobs, but like have your logo, have like a picture of you or your associates or your business partner or your building or whatever. But like, I mean, I <laughs> can't see what I'm doing. But no, fuck. God, I every time I see her face, I was just getting more and more annoyed. I'm like, I'm just gonna block this bitch. So, um, yeah. I know. Yeah. It's easy to get frustrated, but, you know, don't. Yeah. If you think the world's full of idiots, and it is, oh. just do your thing and work with the nice people. And it's been a successful formula for me. And I think... I get to pick and choose how I want to work with. I think it's important to talk about, you know, um... Oh, why do I feel like something's... Is something crawling on me? What? It's your hair. I guess. No, no, no. It's your hair blowing it is? on you. Yeah. I'm like shedding like crazy. Um, these... De this denim. These... These... <laughs> this guy. This guy. <laughs> <coughs> oh, my God. I'm dying. This denim is not for everyone, okay? So if you're listening to this and you think that's expensive, it's probably not for you because you're not in that season of your business or you're not in that time of your business. That's okay. That doesn't. Or you might not have the demand for yeah. it in your area. Yeah. Like a lot and of that's denim okay. We sell, you know. That's why I try to tell people about the lots that we do. You know, hey, these are good deals yeah, because it's cuts. a good way to have product but not have that type of liability. Now, if you can buy the made in the USA and it's absolutely no liability to you, you know you can sell it, then do it. But don't feel bad about yourself or your business if you can. And I think yeah. maybe a lot of those people that were saying nasty things, I think they're in the position where they can't afford it. You know it. what that is? And instead of accepting it, they're yeah. salty. 
That's that was those are the grapes I always tell you about. Oh, the goat. The goat couldn't get those grapes, so he yeah. said those grapes are probably sour. They're yeah. probably not good because they can detain them. Yeah. Huh? It's funny how many times that goat pops up, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Three Marguerites, resellers of curated finds on eBay. Antique, vintage, contemporary. Hand smock dresses on Sunday mornings. Pearl snap shirts in the same dance hall where Grandpa waltz Granny. A Shetland wool sweater keeps you cozy around the campfire. Chicken soup and the price is right under an heirloom afghan. We hope you'll find these memories and more in our eBay store. Three Marguerites gladly ships overseas purchases through the eBay Global Shipping Program. And that's ebay.com slash str slash three margarites. ebay.com slash str slash three margarites. Thank you for your patronage. Hey, can you get me a drink? What would you like? I don't know, guys. What should I have? Um, Ranch water, white, blue moon. You know, I'm a blue moon. I don't drink beer a lot. You know little boy blue? (laughs) <laughs> no. Don't. Yeah. Well, you're away from your mic. I always, anytime the word blue comes up, I always say, you know, little boy blue? And she's like, yeah. I say, because he needed the money. <laughs> very bad Andrew Dice Clay joke. Oh, it, it just stuck with me. You know, little boy blue. Because he needed the money. Fuck. <laughs> God, this is, um, I'm sorry, this is turning out to be an inappropriate episode. Oh, well. That's what happens after, I mean, I started today at 7 and finished at noon. It was unbearable in there. Tomorrow's going to be Yeah, then joyful. I sent Art to uh, a not-so-lovely part of Fresno to get tables for me. Oh, yeah, I still got to unload those for you. He's seen uh, two drug, he saw two drug deals. <laughs> yep. Not good. Not good. I went to pick up a painting in a lovely part of town. Yeah, I didn't get that job. <laughs> yeah, I won't. All right, so let's see. What else? Okay, so now we're talking about different denim, correct? No, no, I think it's, well, do you feel like we didn't cover anything with the... Yeah, like, I really like what you said about, like, this doesn't have to be for you. It's not for everyone. There's lower tiers of Levi's. There's other brands. You know what? It all comes down to is what... What are your customers wanting? Yeah, I mean, most people really don't care, you know? Yeah, it's what your customers Oh, it's vintage cool. Right. If you educate yourself on the cut, the fit, and know what they're willing to spend, you'll be incredibly successful. Look how many... Just like that dinosaur in the desert. look Look how many of those people, these people leaving comments and stuff, they're supposedly vintage resellers, secondhand resellers. But yet they don't even know what they're talking about. So think about, you know, some of your customers who are just in it for like, oh, that's cool. It's old. Sweet. I'll take it. You know, uh, most people are in that situation. Most people aren't in the situation where someone walks in and they're like, do you have? And then they start rattling off all these specifications of the denim they're looking for. Don't get me wrong. There are those people out there. But more often than not, it's someone who just wants to have their ass look good. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So, I'm sorry. What did you want to talk about? What was it? No, you said you want to talk about some <laughs> other types of denim. De- well, we talk, let's talk say, about denim pricing. Yeah, that's that what I was trying to say. That way we're cohesive like, you know, about our topic. Like, you know, you're on that Made in USA I, kick. So, we finished that one. Well, what so, like, I said, how about other 501s? Well, what I said to most people is it's rare these days that we sell denim for under $30. There's still a grade of Levi's. Some. Some. Yeah. Like, like the Y2K stuff. Right. You know, I've got a price between 10 and 15 depending on how many mm-hmm. people are taking. Uh, then we've got, like, lower in terms of quality that someone's going to rework. We do those, like, for that one company in New York who does get buys them and they just cut the legs. Yeah. And they rework the legs. Um, but, yeah. Now, unfortunately, we've had to bump up from our normal $20 price to 25 for, like, 5 12s, 550s, 505s, non-USA 501s, all the other cuts. Silver tabs are still a little pricey right now. There's still a little bit of uh, inflated demand. OfferUp's asking me for a rating of our table experience. Uh, 
The guy was really nice. <laughs> I'm just teasing. Give him a nice one. I will. He, he I can't will. control his area. No, I know. I feel bad. I feel bad. I'm very lucky to be where I am. Is it was it worse than my old neighborhood? Oh God, yeah. Oh God. Okay. Um, that was like being on Park Avenue. So let's talk about non non USA Levi's. I just did. I know, but <laughs> silver tab, five fifties. Yep. Six four sixes. Six four sixes. Six four six. A little bit on the. Them. Those are expensive. Those yeah, are that's what I mean. I'm talking yeah. about the more expensive ones. So six four sixes, you're looking at in that sixty to one fifty range. Right. Depending on era. Right. Indigo. No, I shouldn't say that. Yeah, that's not a typical thing that most people right. that we deal with buy. It's well, very like the six four six, the era was all made in the USA or some not. All USA. All USA. All USA. Okay. Silver tab is. Both. Uh, both. And then five fifties are both. Correct. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I messed up then. I, I would correct myself though. Well, it's good. We're yeah. allowed to make mistakes. We just can't be arrogant and not admit them. Um. Okay, yeah. Now, I know the 646s six are niche, but I know that you charge a good bit for them. Yeah, those so, come in waves. Those come in every, like 8 to 10 year waves. It's yeah. funny. When I first started, they were so hot. You know, Lenny Kravitz wearing them. Oh, yeah. Japanese wanted them. And then they cooled off, which was great because we still kept buying them. And then it came back again, so it's it's on its third return right now. Mm -hmm. So I'll say this much. I'll give you guys some perspective from me because I answer a lot of emails, or at least I try to. But I very frequently have people reach out about denim, solely denim, solely purchasing denim from us. And there's some things I'll typically check in with Art about just to make sure I'm pricing, so I'm giving them accurate information, okay? It is rare for me to tell people, after telling people, rather, our denim pricing, it's rare for me to even get a response. And I'm telling you this because I want to show you how little I think people know about what the market is like. Yeah, you because, can't compare it to thrift stores, going into a thrift store right. and buying something for 50 cents. And I was never able to find a lot of denim in a thrift store. I always found, like, tops, dresses, skirts, jackets. Um, so, it's unfortunate, you know, for those people. But I think for them, they, uh, they think it sounds cool. It looks cool. And then they're like, wait, What? It's going to cost me what? I had a young girl, I mean, I think I think she was a girl, young person, reach out to me. And their bio said denim expert. But they were, they were just starting out. And I told them how much we charge for denim. No response. And that's fine. That's, that's the fine. Way, that's that's fine. how you weed but out But I just want to tell people that because a lot of people aren't on my end of the, of the job my end of the you're buying but you're not you're selling to people in the wholesale sense so um could you imagine if we were retail <laughs> all the wholesalers do it i'd lose my fucking mind yeah no desire no desire i mean think about how much i enjoy selling like t-shirts online but other than that nope Denim, no absolutely yeah, not. No, I'm just saying. Like, our our uh, return rate when I worked at Urban Outfitters for denim was fifty percent. And, I would, and I, they made I an exception for us because typically it's supposed to be twenty or below. Yeah. You know, for years I fought them on that. Like denim needs to be tried on and it needs to be. Installed. Well, the UK team eventually, or the Europe team rather, they stopped doing it online. I thought that was smart. I mean, I, I know I had a coworker who had worked in stores forever. That's what people say. When I get urban, they'll say, oh, I worked in stores. She worked in the stores forever. And she would give people 10 pairs of denim at a time to take back with them to try on. And they might walk away with one, if they're lucky, maybe two shorts or jeans. So it's yeah, just it's like... it's good to have some variety for your clients in your store. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I just thought that was a unique perspective of mine, at least, that, you know... I hear from these people and then I don't hear from them just because it's it's out of their range. So if I was that person, I would pivot. I'd say, okay, well, 
you know, I've gotten those kinds of emails too, right? Mm -hmm. But the person was kind enough to reply back saying, I'm sorry, this is out of my price range or budget. I can only afford X amount. And I said, okay, I can work with that, but these are the cuts you would get, and this is the sizing you would get. Yeah. And they, and they ordered. Yeah, I mean, because sizing affects pricing too. Yeah. and But the thing is, that person was respectful enough to reply back because I took my time to answer them. They should do the same. Say, sorry, this is too expensive or this won't work for me. My clients are here. Okay, no harm, no foul. Thanks for reaching out. Well, you know? It depends. Everybody has different email etiquette. I can almost I can almost smell when I'm not getting an email back. You know, I've just I've been doing it that long now that I'm pretty good at guessing who I am and who I am not going to hear back from. Yeah, you're all pretty good. Yeah. It's just like a, a weird sixth witchy sense. sixth sense. Not sixth sense, it's like a intuition? Yeah. Excuse me. Beer. <laughs> um So, if you can't afford denim for your shop, you know, if you can't stock your shop with, with made in the USA it. denim, yeah. you know, that doesn't mean that you can't maybe buy a pair and, and put aside for a rainy day as an investment or buy a pair for yourself as a, a gift to yourself. You know, there are other ways to enjoy the denim other than selling hmm. it. Um, or even like, you know, other made in USA stuff like that 90s era of high waist yeah you know, for someone's sure. like specifically ha needs and has to have made in USA guess what right now is such a great time to get Wranglers made in USA because they are everywhere still and pretty soon the, the fashion is going to switch again and people are going to want Wranglers and Wrangler prices are going to go crazy same thing happens it just comes and goes so why not be a leader instead of a follower? Get yourself main USA Wranglers. I mean, the fade on those things is gorgeous. Yeah. The fit's good. Yeah. I mean, I, I've said this before. I think now, you kicked me. No, no, sorry. I think the the fit on Wrangler and Lee is just different. I think it's better, in my opinion. Yep. I have a really hard time finding Levi's that fit me. It's right, just so, so funny. Now, it's funny to see all these people getting all worked up over Levi's because for me, I'm like, I can't even fucking wear them. Yeah, you I said one of the tools that texted or don't five, five, five. worked at Levi's. Uh huh. That doesn't say much because no, most doesn't. of the idiots that have come through from Levi's are just that. There's a few girls so, I really like and they're super sweet, but um, I'm not impressed with their knowledge. More often than not, you when art when art says they're coming, I'm like, ugh. There's a few sweet girls yeah. that I enjoy. Yeah, yeah, not all of them, but but for the most part, you have to educate them on their own company. Yeah. Of what the cuts are, what and I'm like, um, are you kidding me? How did you get this job? Without yeah, he was one. Of, he was trying. He was doing business on the comments. He was another one. I worked for Levi's. Might as well say you wipe your ass. Big deal. I was gonna say something else, but I won't say it because I know no. it'll. There's a certain school people go to that if people say it to me, and I'm like. What is the Shania Twain? That don't impress me much. <laughs> oh, fit him? I won't say which school. Fit him. I won't say which school. Fit him. No. <laughs> I'm going to get it out of you. Is it fit him? I'm not going to say. Fashion is to design and merchandising. I'm not going to say. Ah. I don't want to offend anyone, but there's just a certain school when people say it. I'm like, mm -mm -mm, okay. Huh. And I'm always shocked at what they don't know and how little they do. So... You That's know. the drive through fashion school. Which one? The one, fit them. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> so this, fit them. Uh -uh. All right. I won't say. Okay. I didn't go to a great school, you know. I mean, I'm not like some fucking Harvard grad or anything like that, but I don't wear a chip on my yes. shoulder about where I went. I'm like, yeah, I went to college. I don't, I'm not like, I went to Westchester University of Pennsylvania. It's like, yeah, it was a kind of an okay school. It's a state school. You know, but some people really... Life is the great educator, not the university. Yeah, that's it's true. It's your experience, your hands-on, it's, it's the people you meet. Art yelled at me to stop yawning, but I'm just, I'm so comfortable. Art yelled at you to stop yawning? Yeah. You said, stop yawning. That's not yelling, that's whispering. 
I'm drinking a beer, which I hardly ever drink. I just ate lunch and a cupcake. The fan is blowing. It's comfortable in here. Very please, lucky. Please don't fart. That's the only thing that you haven't done yet. <laughs> that mic will pick it up. These are sensitive mics. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see how good these mics are. No, I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else we haven't covered. How about when these people attack them or try to criticize them for wanting to share information? Like if they happen to be in a situation. Who's they? They, they who? Who's <laughs> they? They <laughs> what who? Do you mean? If these people attack them, who's yeah. them? Our listeners, our friends. Oh. If they're if in a situation they, like Then us. you should say attack our listeners. Ah, uh, crikey. Yeah. Yeah, so you So what, what should they do? Friend. Yeah. Like, don't get Block angry. Block them. <laughs> Block them. Don't get don't angry. Don't converse with these people. I'm sorry. Yeah, don't, don't, <laughs> in, don't give them the satisfaction <laughs> of your time. Just block them, move on. Most of these, I mean. Even, shish for a sec, woman. Go. Oh, some of these people barely know how to put a sentence together. It is just not worth your time. I know not everyone's a fucking grammarian like me, but just, just forget it. It felt so good today. I was like, and it, the funny thing is most of these people weren't even following us. So I don't care about blocking them. I'm not losing followers or anything. Who gives a rat's ass? I was like, block, block. Block, block, and then they're just automatically deleting their comment. That's good. And that's what you should do. Yeah. You know, focus on the positive. Focus on what it is that you do best. And, you know, here you are trying to do something nice, ed- like show people and educate them in a little way. And the majority of the people that you tried to reach actually appreciated what you did. Don't let the few tarnish or piss you off. If anything, it should motivate you to stay the way you are, you know. And that's how I get. Well, that, to me, is just great fuel I'm like, and I, I just and I, I feel sorry for them because like I you too. said earlier they will never get it and that's fine not everyone is supposed to get it not everyone's supposed to be successful because some people are just idiots yeah I mean I, I was talking about a friend with this earlier I'm like you know not everyone can be the fucking CEO or the CFO or the whatever whatever not everyone can be art you know, it's like, that's just not how life's, the cookie is not going to crumble that way for everyone. But people are, I think a lot of people are just living in this weird utopia, this like faux utopia right now where everybody is this and everybody's that. And everybody. Or everybody should be equal? No, no, not, not necessarily in terms of equality. I'm just talking about like. No, they feel like they deserve something. I think it's like, don't. it's, it all started with giving everyone a gold fucking star, you know? And as a teacher, I thought, always thought that was a bad idea because oh, participation it's, it's your, it's your bad subjects that created character. It's your bad jobs that created character. I'm not saying you should stay in a job and be miserable. I'm not saying that you should not get help if you're failing a class you're taking, but that builds character in you and not everyone is going to be successful in everything and at the same level. I'm sorry, that's just life. And if you want to live in that weird, you know, farce, then then you can. But I don't, you know, I mean, I don't live in that world. No. That's like saying everybody's going to be X amount of weight and look like this and look like that. It's fucking impossible. It, it, I find it so, like, hypocritical that... Oh, it's okay to have all these different, like you just said perfectly, the different ways. Be happy in here. Be happy in here. But when it comes to economics and success of business and success of life, it's supposed to be a cookie cutter. Everyone's supposed to be the same. You know, it's like those two things don't match. You can't think that it's okay to have all this body positivity with all this other stuff, but it's not okay to have money, business, success, life positivity. Yeah. Everybody fits in a lane. And the key to happiness and the key to all of it, be happy in your lane. And if you're not, then take that adversity that Bridget talked about, motivate yourself to do better. And you can. You know, sometimes it's it's just getting down and dirty. Sometimes allocating more time to your business. I've Don't only t- gone to where I've gone to in life because of bad things that happened to me. Yeah, I mean, it's the thing we stress in sports, like to the to my boys. I, I am more happy when they lose 
or they don't do well because it gives me opportunity to see what their mental makeup is to say okay you learn more from a loss every coach i've ever had tell me that and so i and it's stuck and it and it's true what do i have to do to get better what do i have to do to dominate what do i have to do to to be the best and that's what you want i mean i'm bridget i think sometimes goes crazy thinking like what else are you trying to achieve and she knows i push myself very hard there is still so much i could do things so much better and thank god she's here because she's helping me do that but you have to keep pushing yourself you can't rely on things you did a while back and you know get into some uncomfortable areas uncomfortable zones so that way you can see what you're made of challenge yourself you know boredom leads to stagnation stagnation leads to unhappiness and that's what it is just push 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 yeah you know but this new generation i feel sorry for but every now and then we get people coming through our doors that make me smile and happy they're in their early 20s and they are have amazing work ethic and they have great positivity and i know that there's hope for a new generation of of people yeah you know we've been blessed you know if you think about our young clients yeah they are a hard working bunch they know? are we're very <coughs> we're very lucky our clientele in general they're very hard working people and they respect art for what he does and his business and um, I make their business easy you know and they appreciate the convenience of being able to go to one place and get everything you need yes can they find it cheaper at a hundred different thrift stores they'd have to hit to find what they would find in four hours they would take them a month so right they, so they understand time is money yeah. is there anything else you want to add before we wrap up nope I think I've spoken way too much today. I have one more ad to do and then our uh, patron program. Ooh. Hello? Okay. Elwood Vintage was opened in 2016 with a dream and three t-shirts. Six years later, Elwood Vintage has that perfect piece for every occasion. Put on an Elwood Vintage tee and hear the loud guitar screaming, feel the drums beating, and you put, and you singing your heart out at your favorite 80s rock concert. We have that Buttersoft Biker tee that will take you back to your first motorcycle ride with the wind in your hair and zero Fs given. Visit ElwoodVintage.com. Don't forget about that perfect crisp pair of vintage jeans to jump into in the morning. When you buy vintage, you're buying more than the clothes. You're buying the memory and the good vibes that come. Elwood Vintage. Wear them till they melt off. That is my last ad read uh, for today. So as I mentioned in the beginning, thanks to our paying patrons, um, you know, I take that money and apply it to different things. We have a website fee. We have a hosting fee for the podcast. Something as simple as like our email fee. There's a lot of little fees that add up. So having um, the patron program really helps to put toward those bills. And occasionally I use some of the money to do equipment upgrades. So very excited to have these little handy microphones, especially if we're traveling or doing something cool in the warehouse. We don't have to be anchored down to the, uh, the desk. So if you're interested in our patron program, it's patron.podbean.com slash mybestvintagelifepodcast. We have our $5 level. It's the most popular level. It includes an on-air shout-out. You get to ask Art a burning question on air. And then uh, two bonus episodes a month. We're over 30 bonus episodes now in the back catalog. So if you can't get enough of our content for $5 a month, you can get even more. And that'll give you a few hours more of content to listen to. And we also have our $20 level, which is our ad level. You get a 30 to 60 second ad twice a month. You just heard me read a few of those. And you also get access to the bonus episodes. Like I said, over 30 bonus episodes available. That's a big library already. Yes. So if you're interested in either one of those patron levels, the five or the $20 level, visit patron.podbean.com slash my best vintage life podcast. Are you going to say something? No. Nope. Oh, you're looking at the microphone. Okay. <laughs> In the meantime, my friends, stay safe, stay sane, stay kind, be kind. Be kind to <laughs> animals. <laughs> no, don't, don't be basic. <laughs> and don't be basic. Bye.